Hello and welcome to this new part of the Blazor blog series. Today this part is all about migrating .NET Core 3.1 to .NET 5. That's correct, it is not called Core anymore, although some libraries are still called Core, like Entry Framework Core. We will see this in a minute. But now we've got .NET 5. It has officially been released during the .NET Conf that was running the last couple of days. And now we are all able to download, install and enjoy the latest version of the .NET framework. It's a combination of the .NET Core framework and the older .NET frameworks. I think .NET 4.8 was the latest one. But now there's only .NET left. It is still cross-platform, it is open source. The latest version is .NET 5. And the plan of Microsoft is to release a new major version of .NET every year, every November to be more exact. So we got version 5 now and next year we've got 6 and so on. Now, before we start, one more hint. If you want to dive deep into Blazor WebAssembly, maybe you want to have a look at the Blazor WebAssembly Full Stack Bootcamp, an online course I created where you built an online browser game, a classic online browser game with Blazor, WebAssembly, Web API, Entity Framework, SQL, Lite, JSON, Web Tokens, and so on, where users can register and create units like archers, knights, and mages, and then let these units fight against other users, climb the leaderboard, and become the best warrior of them all. So if you want to have a look, the link is in the description of this video, or watch the two-hour preview here on YouTube. Just have a look at the info card. Okay, enough about that. Let's migrate our project. Now you see this empty Visual Studio solution here. Well, in essence, it's not an empty solution. I just did not open any file because I want you to focus on your version of Visual Studio. Because if you want to use .NET 5, you have to install the version 16.8.0 or 16.8.0. Oh, this is crucial. You have to use this version. Otherwise, .NET 5 will not work. And of course, you have to download the latest SDK and you can get the SDK right here. There it is. You can either just Google for .NET Core or .NET SDK and, or .NET 5, whatever, and then you should get these results here and then you can just click download.NET and there you see all the different options. There is a version available of course, also for Linux, Mac OS, and there's also a Docker container. And this is the recommended version, .NET 5, just download it. Or you can have a look at all the .NET downloads available. You see that .NET Core 3.1 is still supported, but it won't soon, I guess. Well, .NET 5 is the latest version, so maybe you want to upgrade to that version now. And as you can see, um, when you just click download.NET SDK, it also says that you need Visual Studio 2019 or you use Visual Studio Code and we will do that at the end of this video. Okay, long story short, you need Visual Studio Community Edition if you want in the version 16.8 and the .NET SDK version 5 of course and then we can start with the migration. And to do that, we start with the client project file. So just open the project file here. And the very first thing we have to do is change the SDK on top, because instead of web, we are now using Blazor WebAssembly. And here in the property group, we can remove the Razor Lang version. And the target framework now is net 5.0. That's it for these changes. And then of course we have to update the package references. But before we do that, we can remove this one here. WebAssembly build is not necessary anymore. So just remove this one, save the project file, and then we update the package references. And there's a really easy way to do that. We just right click the client project, click manage NuGet packages. And then already here on the update tab, which is already selected, 
Maybe by default you've got the install tab, but this doesn't really matter. You go to the updates tab and then you see already these are all the packages that have been mentioned in the project file as well. You just select all packages, click update and accept everything of course. And then we've got the latest versions. You can see it here, we can verify the version 5. Oh, and save this thing. Again, and then already we can go to the server projects. You go to the project file and now, very important, this SDK stays the same. So we're still using the, the SDK.web here. And after that, we have to change the target framework again to .net or .net 5.0. We can save that already and then of course we have some package references here we we also have to update and again we just right click the server project and then manage you get packages we select all the packages as you can see it's WebAssembly server entity framework core entity framework core design and entity framework core sql light funny thing that it's still called entity framework core well in its core i guess it's still .NET Core. But anyways, let's just click update, hit okay, I accept. And then we've got the latest version. As you can see here, now everything uses version five. Beautiful. And now we can also save this one. And then the last thing, we don't have to do this, but of course, we can still do it. We change the target framework of the shared project here. So let's go to this project file. We use net 5.0. And then again, as you can see, we've got the, the package reference here with version 5.70. So we can update this one as well. Again, just right click and then select manage new packages and here we see it already there's also version 5 available now so we update this one and we're done save everything and then we should already be able to run this project so we built everything just to be sure and then when this is done, we go to the package manager console or we don't because we get an error. And this actually, I expected this one when I tried this before, that was the same error. This namespace does not exist anymore. So we can fix this real quick by just using the quick fix menu and then select remove unnecessary usings and now save the block controller build everything again and now we've got no error anymore so let's go to the package manager console let's have a look we are in the no we have to go to the right directory so blazer block and then server and now we can run this thing with .NET watch run. And let's see, there it is. The block is already running. And if we hit F12, we select the network tab and then filter nothing. So we just select all, reload this thing. And here you can see that we are really using .NET 5.0. One more hint, if you get a wall of errors here when you rebuild this project and run it, might be the case that you get a bunch of integrity check failures. I had this as well and um, this just means that some files are still older than the files that Visual Studio or the .NET framework is expecting. So something is wrong with the integrity of all these files. Well, the easiest fix is to just go back to your solution 
and right click the solution file here and just hit clean solution and then rebuild it or build it again and then the error should be gone and you will see your block again and as you can see we can just reload it we get all the blog posts we see the single posts and we can even create a new one for example now with .NET 5 URL is .NET 5 yeah whoop whoop we've got the latest version we create this and there is our latest blog post with the .NET 5 framework now, not .NET Core anymore, .NET 5. And that's it. Now we've got our project migrated and updated from .NET Core 3.1 to .NET 5. I know this was really quick. We've got a lot of time left. So one more thing I want to test here now is we used the, the IDE Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition and I did this because when I first started with making these Blazor WebAssembly applications it was easier to do this with Visual Studio but now with .NET 5 finally released you should be able to use Visual Studio Code as well so let's just try this and we open this folder in the file explorer there it is and now just right click and open this with Visual Studio Code. And maybe first stop this thing here. Now go back to Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, I've got the version 1.51 or 51.1. And yes, we want to add some assets for the server project. And now we've got some files here, the launch JSON and the tasks JSON, beautiful. This is necessary for Visual Studio Code. But as you can see, the projects are here. We've got the client project, the server project, and also the shared project. And now let's have a look. We are in the root directory. So we have to go to the Blazor blog and then the server directory. Okay, and now let's start it here. We wait a couple of seconds and it is there on my other screen. There it is. Now it is running with Visual Studio Code. Again, we can open the console, look at the network tab, reload, and we see that we're using .NET. Five. Beautiful, everything works as expected. And now we can continue with more features, more implementations in the next part. But I've got this question for you. What do you want me to use? Do you want me to use Visual Studio Code now? Or should I still use Visual Studio here? I'm not sure about that. I would really appreciate it if you write it in the comments, what is your preferred IDE? And then I will continue with this one. And um, that's it. Again, if you wanna dive deeper into Blazor WebAssembly, please have a look at the Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp. The link is in the video description. Click it, use it to get a huge discount. We will build a Blazor WebAssembly full stack application with Web API, Entity Framework, SQLite, and so on. Authentication with JSON Web Tokens. We build a browser game. And of course, this project will also be updated to .NET 5, not .NET Core anymore, .NET 5. And you can, of course, watch a two hour preview here on YouTube. All right, now if you like this part of the Blazor Block series, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button or even subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon to get a notification when a new video has been uploaded. And that's it for this part. Thank you very much for watching and I see you next time.